Life is a series of choices, each one steering us down a unique path. The philosophy of Stoicism, championed by the likes of Marcus Aurelius and Seneca, offers invaluable insights into making decisions that can shape our lives in profound ways. In this exploration, we'll delve into 10 decisions inspired by Stoic principles that have the power to transform your journey. These decisions are not merely fleeting moments, but rather deliberate choices that align with the core tenets of Stoicism, leading to a life of wisdom, resilience and purpose. So let's embark on a journey of self-discovery and empowerment as we uncover the 10 decisions that can truly change your life through the lens of Stoicism. If you appreciate what we're doing here, a simple free favor I'll ask from you is to hit the subscribe button and don't skip any part of this video. So let's embark on this journey together, embracing the wisdom of the Stoics and transforming our lives for the better. Number one, say yes to what matters. Every time we say yes to something, we are making a deliberate choice to invest our time and energy. This means that every yes implicitly comes with a no to something else. Seneca wisely noted, it is not that we have a short time to live, but that we waste a lot of it. This insight challenges us to be more selective and intentional with our commitments. How often do we find ourselves saying yes out of habit, obligation or fear of missing out? Only to realize later that those choices did not add value to our lives. To say yes to what matters, we need to pause and reflect on our priorities. Ask yourself, is this truly important? Will it matter in a year, five years or ten years? This line of questioning helps filter out the noise and focus on what genuinely aligns with our values and long-term goals. For instance, consider the difference between spending time with loved ones versus getting caught up in trivial social media debates. One nourishes our relationships and well-being, while the other often leads to unnecessary stress and distraction. Saying yes to what matters is not just about grand gestures or major life decisions. It's also about the small, everyday choices that collectively shape our lives. Imagine starting your day with a few moments of gratitude, acknowledging the gift of life itself, as Marcus Aurelius suggested. This simple practice can set a positive tone for the day and remind us to appreciate the little things that often go unnoticed. Stoicism teaches us to cherish life and live purposefully. This means recognizing that every moment is a gift and should be used wisely. Each day presents countless opportunities to practice this principle. Whether it's dedicating time to a meaningful project, engaging in deep conversations, or simply enjoying a quiet moment of reflection, these are the choices that enrich our lives and bring us closer to our true selves. It's also essential to remember that saying yes to what matters often requires saying no to what doesn't. This can be challenging, especially when it involves letting go of habits, commitments, or even relationships that no longer serve us. However, by doing so, we free up space and energy for what truly resonates with our core values. As the Stoics would advise, this process is not about deprivation, but about making room for abundance in the areas that count. Number two, be disciplined. Discipline starts with recognizing that every day presents us with countless choices. Some are mundane, like deciding what to have for breakfast, while others are more significant, such as choosing how to respond to a challenging situation. Regardless of the scale, each choice is an opportunity to practice discipline. It's about consistently making decisions that align with our values and long-term goals. Even when it's difficult or inconvenient, consider the daily habits that shape our lives. Stoicism teaches us the importance of routines and practices that cultivate a disciplined mind. For example, 
beginning the day with a moment of reflection or meditation can set a focused and intentional tone. This practice, which Marcus Aurelius himself engaged in, helps center our thoughts and prepare us for the challenges ahead. It's in these quiet moments of introspection that we build the mental fortitude needed to face the day's adversities. Seneca emphasized the power of thoughts in shaping our lives. He said, we become what we think about most of the time. This underscores the importance of disciplined thinking by training our minds to focus on what is within our control and letting go of what is not we cultivate a sense of inner peace and strength. This mental discipline is not about suppressing emotions, but about managing them in a way that serves our highest good. Physical discipline is equally important. The Stoics believed that taking care of our bodies is a form of respect for ourselves and the life we have been given. Regular exercise, mindful eating and adequate rest are not just about maintaining health, but about building resilience. When our bodies are strong and well-nourished, our minds are more capable of handling stress and adversity. This holistic approach to discipline ensures that we are prepared to meet life's challenges with vigor and clarity. Discipline also involves the courage to say no to distractions and temptations that pull us away from our goals. In our fast-paced world, it's easy to get sidetracked by social media, endless entertainment options, or even the allure of procrastination. Stoicism teaches us the value of staying true to our path. It's about prioritizing what's truly important and being willing to forego immediate gratification for long-term fulfillment. This might mean setting boundaries, creating a structured schedule, or simply being mindful of how we spend our time. It's important to remember that discipline is a practice, not a destination. There will be days when we falter, when motivation wanes, or when we give in to distractions. The key is to approach these moments with self-compassion and a commitment to get back on track. Stoicism encourages us to view each day as a new beginning, a chance to start anew with renewed focus and determination. As Seneca wisely noted, begin at once to live and count each separate day as a separate life. Incorporating discipline into our lives transforms the way we approach both the mundane and the extraordinary. It empowers us to live with intention, to make choices that reflect our values and to face challenges with courage and grace. By being disciplined, we are not only more effective in achieving our goals, but also more aligned with our true selves. Discipline is about taking control of our lives and steering them in a direction that aligns with our deepest values and aspirations. It's about realizing that every small action, every daily habit, contributes to the larger tapestry of our lives. By embracing the stoic principles of discipline, we can navigate life's unpredictability with strength and purpose, creating a life of meaning and fulfillment. So, let us commit to being disciplined, to harnessing the power of our minds, and to living each day with intention and resilience. Number 3. Do not suffer in advance. Seneca wisely observed, we are more often frightened than hurt, and we suffer more in imagination than in reality. This insight sheds light on a common human experience. Much of our suffering is self-inflicted, born from our minds projecting fears and worst-case scenarios that may never come to pass. Consider how often we let our thoughts wander to the future, concocting elaborate stories about what might happen. These imagined fears can be as varied as worrying about an upcoming presentation at work, fretting over potential health issues, or agonizing over financial stability. While some level of preparation and foresight is prudent, allowing these fears to dominate our thoughts can lead to unnecessary stress and anxiety. Stoicism teaches us to anchor ourselves in the present moment, dealing with challenges as they arise, rather than being burdened by hypothetical troubles. 
Marcus Aurelius offers a powerful antidote to this kind of anticipatory suffering. In his meditations he writes, Do not disturb yourself by picturing your life as a whole. Do not assemble in your mind the many and varied troubles which have come to you in the past and will come again in the future. This advice encourages us to break free from the mental habit of bundling past and future worries into a single overwhelming burden. Instead, we should focus on the present moment, addressing one issue at a time with calm and clarity. Our minds have an incredible capacity to create vivid scenarios. This imagination is a double-edged sword. On one hand, it allows us to innovate and dream. On the other hand, it can lead us down a rabbit hole of fear and anxiety. The Stoics understood this duality and emphasized the importance of harnessing our imagination for constructive purposes while preventing it from becoming a source of unnecessary suffering. By focusing on what is real and immediate, we can conserve our mental energy for dealing with actual problems rather than imagined ones. Another aspect of not suffering in advance is cultivating an attitude of acceptance towards uncertainty. Life, by its very nature, is unpredictable. Trying to control every outcome is not only impossible, but also a source of constant frustration. Stoicism teaches us to accept that uncertainty is a fundamental part of life. This acceptance doesn't mean passivity or resignation. Rather, it means acknowledging what we cannot change and focusing our efforts on what we can influence. As the Serenity Prayer wisely puts it, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. Incorporating this stoic mindset into our daily lives can transform the way we handle stress and anxiety. When faced with uncertainty or potential challenges, remind yourself of Seneca's wisdom, we suffer more in imagination than in reality. Take a deep breath and bring your focus back to the present moment. Ask yourself, what can I do right now that is constructive and within my control? This simple shift in perspective can alleviate a great deal of unnecessary suffering and allow you to approach life's uncertainties with greater equanimity. Number 4. Stop Wasting Time Seneca captured this sentiment perfectly when he wrote, Putting things off is the biggest waste of life. This powerful statement challenges us to consider how often we procrastinate, delay, or fritter away precious moments on activities that add little to no value to our lives. In a world filled with endless distractions, this stoic advice is more relevant than ever. Think about the modern conveniences and technologies designed to save us time, yet ironically, they often become the very things that consume it. Social media, streaming services, and instant messaging can easily eat up hours of our day if we're not mindful. While these tools can offer relaxation and connection, it's crucial to recognize when they're pulling us away from more meaningful pursuits. Seneca's wisdom urges us to take a hard look at how we're spending our time and to reclaim it for activities that truly matter. Procrastination, often dubbed the thief of time, is another significant hurdle. It's that nagging habit of delaying tasks, convincing ourselves that tomorrow will be a better day to start. But as the Stoics remind us, tomorrow is not guaranteed. Marcus Aurelius advised, you could leave life right now. Let that determine what you do and say and think. This poignant reminder of life's impermanence should motivate us to act with urgency and purpose. By understanding that our time is limited, we can push ourselves to stop procrastinating and start taking action on our goals and dreams today. Consider the impact of procrastination on our goals. When we delay working on our aspirations, we not only push back our progress, but also diminish our potential achievements. Each day we postpone, 
we lose a day we could have used to move closer to our dreams. The Stoic approach is to begin at once, to live each day as if it were our last, fully embracing the present moment. This mindset helps us focus on what needs to be done now, rather than what can be put off until later. Another key aspect of stopping the waste of time is prioritization. Stoicism teaches us to discern what is truly important and to dedicate our time and energy accordingly. This means identifying our core values and aligning our daily actions with them. For instance, if we value personal growth, we might prioritize reading, learning new skills, or engaging in reflective practices like journaling or meditation. If relationships are important to us, we should make time for meaningful conversations and connections with loved ones. By prioritizing what matters most, we ensure that our time is spent on activities that enrich our lives and align with our deeper purpose. Moreover, Stopping the waste of time involves being mindful of how we approach our daily tasks. It's about cultivating a sense of presence and intention in everything we do. Instead of mindlessly going through the motions, the Stoics encourage us to be fully engaged in our activities, whether it's working on a project, exercising, or spending time with family. This level of mindfulness not only enhances our productivity, but also our overall sense of fulfillment. When we are truly present, we can extract more meaning and satisfaction from our experiences, making our time feel well spent. The stoic practice of memento mori, or reflecting on mortality, can also be a powerful motivator to stop wasting time. By contemplating the finite nature of our lives, we can gain a clearer perspective on what is truly important. This reflection doesn't need to be morbid, rather, it can be a source of inspiration to live more fully and intentionally. When we acknowledge that our time is limited, we become more aware of the choices we make and more determined to make each moment count. Eliminating time-wasting habits requires a conscious effort to set boundaries and create a structured routine. This might mean setting specific times for checking emails or social media dedicating blocks of time to focused work, and ensuring that we allocate time for rest and rejuvenation. A well-structured routine helps us stay on track and prevents the drift into aimless activities. By being intentional with our schedule, we can maximize our productivity and ensure that our time is used effectively. Let's not forget the importance of taking breaks and allowing ourselves time to rest. While it's crucial to avoid wasting time, it's equally important to recognize that rest and relaxation are not wastes of time when done purposefully. The Stoics believed in balance and moderation, understanding that a well-rested mind is more capable of focused and meaningful work. So, schedule your downtime just as you would any important task and use it to recharge and refresh your mind and body. Number 5. Control Your Emotions Emotions are an integral part of the human experience. They add richness and depth to our lives, but they can also be overwhelming and disruptive if not properly managed. The Stoics recognized that while we cannot always control what happens to us, we can control how we respond to it. This ability to choose our response is where true freedom lies. Seneca emphasized this point when he said, He who is brave is free. Bravery in this context is the courage to face our emotions head on and to master them rather than be mastered by them. One practical way to control your emotions is through the practice of mindfulness. By becoming more aware of our thoughts and feelings as they arise, we can create a space between stimulus and response. This space allows us to choose how we want to react rather than being swept away by our initial emotional impulses. For example, if someone says something hurtful, instead of immediately reacting with anger or defensiveness, we can take a moment to breathe, observe our feelings and respond calmly and thoughtfully. This mindful approach is deeply rooted in Stoic teachings 
and can lead to more harmonious interactions and a greater sense of inner peace. Another stoic technique for managing emotions is cognitive distancing, which involves viewing our emotions from a detached perspective. Marcus Aurelius often reminded himself that his mind has the power to separate itself from negative emotions. He wrote, the mind adapts and converts to its own purposes the obstacle to our acting. The impediment to action advances action. What stands in the way becomes the way. By seeing emotions as temporary states rather than defining characteristics, we can reduce their grip on us. This perspective helps us understand that while emotions are natural, they don't have to control our actions or dictate our mood. The Stoics also emphasized the importance of examining the stories we tell ourselves. Often, our emotional reactions are based on the narratives we construct about our experiences. For instance, if we fail at a task, we might tell ourselves a story that we are incompetent or doomed to fail in the future. These narratives can amplify negative emotions and lead to unnecessary suffering. Instead, the Stoics encourage us to challenge these stories and replace them with more constructive ones. For example, instead of viewing a failure as a reflection of our worth, we can see it as a learning opportunity and a step towards growth. Emotional regulation is not about suppressing or denying our feelings. Rather, it's about understanding and managing them in a healthy way. The Stoics believed in the value of rationality and reason as tools for navigating emotions. By engaging our rational mind, we can assess our feelings and determine the most appropriate course of action. This doesn't mean ignoring emotions, but rather integrating them into our decision-making process in a balanced and thoughtful manner. Consider the role of self-compassion in emotional regulation. The Stoics advocated for kindness and understanding towards oneself, recognizing that everyone makes mistakes and experiences emotional turmoil. By practicing self-compassion, we can navigate our emotions with greater ease and reduce the self-criticism that often accompanies negative feelings. This gentle approach allows us to process emotions without getting stuck in them. Another aspect of controlling your emotions is focusing on what is within your control. The Stoics taught that while we cannot control external events, we can control our reactions to them. This principle is captured in the Serenity Prayer. Grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. By directing our energy towards what we can influence, we can avoid the frustration and helplessness that come from trying to control the uncontrollable. This focus on internal control empowers us to handle our emotions more effectively and maintain a sense of agency in our lives. Practicing gratitude can be a powerful tool for emotional regulation. Marcus Aurelius often reflected on the good things in his life to counterbalance negative emotions by regularly acknowledging and appreciating the positive aspects of our lives. We can shift our focus away from what's lacking or troubling and towards what brings us joy and fulfillment. This practice can create a more positive emotional baseline, making it easier to manage challenging emotions when they arise. It's also important to recognize the value of emotional resilience, which is the ability to bounce back from adversity. The Stoics believed that facing and overcoming challenges strengthens our character and emotional fortitude. Seneca noted, difficulties strengthen the mind as labor does the body. By embracing challenges and viewing them as opportunities for growth, we can build resilience and become more adept at handling difficult emotions. This resilience enables us to recover more quickly from setbacks and maintain our emotional equilibrium. Number six, focus on how far you can still go. Imagine your life as a journey along a winding path. 
while it's natural to glance back at the miles you've covered, the true essence of Stoic wisdom lies in directing your gaze forward. Each step you take propels you further along your unique path, filled with opportunities for growth, learning and discovery. By focusing on how far you can still go, you open yourself up to the possibilities that await, rather than being bogged down by past experiences. Marcus Aurelius wrote in his meditations, Do not disturb yourself by picturing your life as a whole. Do not assemble in your mind the many and varied troubles which have come to you in the past and will come again in the future. This advice encourages us to live in the present and focus on the next steps we can take. By breaking down our journey into manageable parts, we can better appreciate our progress and maintain a forward-looking mindset. Consider the concept of potential. Each of us possesses untapped potential that can only be realized by continuously striving forward. The Stoics believed that every challenge we encounter is an opportunity for growth. Seneca aptly put it, It is not because things are difficult that we do not dare. It is because we do not dare that they are difficult. This perspective invites us to embrace challenges as stepping stones to greater achievements. When we focus on how far we can still go, we cultivate a mindset of resilience and determination, viewing obstacles as chances to stretch our capabilities and evolve. Reflecting on past successes and failures is important, but it's equally crucial to not let them define our future. Success can sometimes lead to complacency, while failure can cause discouragement. Stoicism teaches us to learn from both, but to keep our eyes on the horizon. Each day is a new opportunity to progress, to build on what we've learned, and to strive towards our goals. This mindset keeps us dynamic and forward-moving, preventing stagnation. Another key aspect of this Stoic principle is the idea of continuous improvement, or Kaizen, as it's known in Japanese philosophy. The Stoics practiced a similar concept, emphasizing the importance of daily progress, no matter how small. Marcus Aurelius advised, waste no more time arguing about what a good man should be, be one. This call to action encourages us to embody our values and make incremental improvements each day. By focusing on how far we can still go, we embrace the journey of self-improvement and strive to become the best version of ourselves. Visualizing future possibilities can be incredibly motivating. When we set our sights on what we can achieve, we are more likely to take proactive steps towards our goals. This forward-thinking approach aligns with the stoic practice of imagining future scenarios to prepare ourselves mentally and emotionally. By doing so, we build confidence and readiness to tackle whatever comes our way. This practice doesn't just prepare us for adversity, it also inspires us to pursue our aspirations with vigor. Moreover, focusing on how far we can still go fosters a growth mindset. A concept championed by modern psychology, but deeply rooted in stoic thought. A growth mindset is the belief that our abilities and intelligence can be developed through dedication and hard work. This contrasts with a fixed mindset, which sees abilities as static. The Stoics believed in the power of self-improvement and the potential for growth. By adopting this mindset, we view challenges as opportunities to learn and grow, rather than as insurmountable obstacles. Think about the role of gratitude in this context. While it's important to strive for future goals, it's equally important to appreciate the progress we've made and the opportunities that lie ahead. Gratitude for our journey so far can fuel our motivation to continue moving forward. Marcus Aurelius often reflected on the good things in his life, which helped him maintain a balanced perspective. By cultivating gratitude, we can acknowledge our achievements and the path ahead with a sense of optimism and determination. Number 7. Take care of others. 
Imagine life as a grand symphony where each person represents a unique note. When we come together in harmony, we create a beautiful melody that transcends time. The Stoics believed that every action we take should contribute to the greater good, enhancing the collective well-being. Seneca wrote, No one can live happily who has regard to himself alone and transforms everything into a question of his own utility. This wisdom teaches us that true happiness and fulfillment come from looking beyond our own needs and considering how we can support and uplift those around us. One of the simplest yet most powerful ways to take care of others is through acts of kindness. A smile, a kind word or a helping hand can have a ripple effect, spreading positivity and warmth far beyond the initial gesture. Think about a time when someone showed you kindness. How did it make you feel? Chances are it lifted your spirits and perhaps even inspired you to pay it forward. Marcus Aurelius often reflected on the value of kindness, noting, the happiness of your life depends upon the quality of your thoughts. By cultivating positive thoughts and extending kindness to others, we not only improve their lives, but also enhance our own. The Stoics also emphasized the importance of empathy, the ability to understand and share the feelings of another. Empathy allows us to connect with others on a deeper level, fostering mutual understanding and support. Seneca advised, wherever there is a human being, there is an opportunity for a kindness. This perspective encourages us to look for ways to empathize with others, to listen to their stories and to offer our support. Empathy is not about solving someone else's problems, but about being present and showing that we care. Taking care of others also involves recognizing our role within the community. The Stoics believed that we all have a part to play in the greater societal framework. Marcus Aurelius wrote, What injures the hive, injures the bee. This analogy reminds us that when we harm or neglect others, we ultimately harm ourselves. Conversely, by contributing positively to our community, we create an environment where everyone can thrive. This sense of social responsibility encourages us to engage in activities that benefit the collective, whether through volunteer work, supporting local initiatives, or simply being a good neighbor. The stoic principle of taking care of others extends to our close relationships, our family, friends, and loved ones. These relationships are foundational to our well-being and happiness. Seneca wrote extensively about the importance of friendship, stating, There is no enjoying the possession of anything valuable unless one has someone to share it with. By nurturing these bonds and being there for our loved ones, we create a support system that enriches our lives and provides strength during difficult times. It's also essential to recognize that taking care of others doesn't mean neglecting ourselves. The Stoics taught that self-care is a crucial component of being able to care for others effectively. We must ensure that we are physically, mentally and emotionally well so that we have the capacity to support those around us. This balance is vital, as Seneca noted, you must live for another if you wish to live for yourself. By maintaining our well-being, we can be more present and available for others. Another aspect of taking care of others is fostering a spirit of generosity. This doesn't necessarily mean giving material things, but rather offering our time, attention and skills. Volunteering for a cause we believe in, mentoring someone or simply being a good listener are all forms of generosity that can make a significant difference in someone's life. Marcus Aurelius reminded us to act with a sense of duty and contribution. Do every act of your life as though it were the last act of your life. This mindset encourages us to give our best in every interaction and to leave a positive impact. The practice of taking care of others also aligns with the Stoic virtue of justice. Justice, in the Stoic sense, involves treating others with fairness, respect and kindness. 
It's about recognizing the inherent worth of every individual and acting in ways that uphold their dignity. By practicing justice, we create a more equitable and compassionate society. Seneca advised, treat your inferiors as you would be treated by your superiors. This golden rule of empathy and fairness ensures that our actions contribute to the well-being of all. In a practical sense, taking care of others can be integrated into our daily routines. Simple acts like checking in on a friend, offering to help a colleague, or expressing gratitude can create a supportive and positive environment. These small gestures accumulate over time, building strong networks of trust and mutual assistance. The Stoics believed that these daily practices of kindness and support are the building blocks of a good life. Number 8. Focus on what you can control. Imagine life as a vast, unpredictable ocean. The waves, currents and weather represent the various external forces and events beyond our control. We cannot change the direction of the wind or the height of the waves but we can adjust our sails and steer our ship. This metaphor beautifully captures the essence of focusing on what we can control, our actions, our attitudes, and our mindset. By taking charge of these aspects, we can navigate even the stormiest seas with grace and confidence. Marcus Aurelius often reflected on this principle in his meditations. He wrote, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. This insight emphasizes that our thoughts and perceptions are within our domain. While we cannot always control what happens to us, we can control how we interpret and respond to these events. By cultivating a disciplined and rational mind, we can maintain our composure and clarity, even in challenging circumstances. One practical application of this stoic principle is managing our emotional reactions. Emotions like anger, fear and frustration often arise from situations we cannot control. However, by focusing on our internal responses, we can choose to respond with calmness and rationality instead of being swept away by these emotions. For instance, if someone criticizes us unfairly, our initial reaction might be anger or defensiveness. But by pausing and reflecting, we can choose a more constructive response, such as seeking to understand the criticism or simply letting it go. The Stoics also believed in the importance of accepting reality as it is. This doesn't mean passivity or resignation, but rather recognizing and accepting the truth of our circumstances. Epictetus taught, Make the best use of what is in your power, and take the rest as it happens. By accepting what we cannot change, we free ourselves from unnecessary frustration and suffering. This acceptance allows us to focus on taking effective action within our sphere of influence, rather than wasting energy on things beyond our control. Consider the example of dealing with a difficult co-worker. While we cannot control their behavior, we can control how we respond. We can choose to remain professional, set clear boundaries, and maintain a positive attitude. By focusing on our own actions and responses, we can create a more positive and productive work environment, regardless of the other person's behavior. This approach not only reduces stress, but also empowers us to take proactive steps to improve our situation. Another powerful aspect of focusing on what we can control is setting realistic and achievable goals. The Stoics emphasized the importance of living with intention and purpose. By setting goals that align with our values and within our control, we can create a sense of direction and fulfillment. For example, while we cannot control whether we get a promotion, we can control the effort we put into our work, our attitude, and our professional development. By focusing on these controllable factors, we increase our chances of success and satisfaction. The principle of focusing on what you can control also encourages us to let go of the need for external validation. 
The Stoics believed that true contentment comes from within, not from the approval or recognition of others. Marcus Aurelius advised, the tranquility that comes when you stop caring what they say or think or do, only what you do. By focusing on our own actions and values, we can find a deeper sense of peace and fulfillment, independent of external opinions. This stoic principle is particularly relevant in times of uncertainty and change, when faced with unpredictable events such as a global pandemic or economic downturn, it's easy to feel overwhelmed and powerless. However, by focusing on what we can control, such as our health, our habits and our resilience, we can navigate these challenges more effectively. This proactive approach helps us build strength and adaptability, allowing us to thrive even in difficult times. Focusing on what you can control fosters a sense of empowerment and agency. It shifts our mindset from victimhood to active participation in our lives. Instead of feeling at the mercy of external circumstances, we recognize our ability to influence our own destiny through our choices and actions. This empowered mindset is a cornerstone of Stoic philosophy, emphasizing personal responsibility and the pursuit of virtue. In relationships, focusing on what we can control can lead to healthier and more harmonious interactions. We cannot control other people's actions or feelings, but we can control our own communication, empathy and respect. By focusing on being the best partner, friend or family member we can be, we contribute to stronger and more supportive relationships. This approach also reduces conflicts and misunderstandings as we take responsibility for our own behavior and reactions. Number nine, be willing to look foolish. Think about the times when fear of embarrassment or failure has held you back. Perhaps you hesitated to ask a question in a meeting, worried that it might seem silly, or avoided trying a new hobby because you feared not being good at it. This fear of looking foolish can be paralyzing, preventing us from taking risks and seizing opportunities that could lead to significant growth. The Stoics understood that to live fully and authentically, we must be willing to step outside our comfort zones and embrace the possibility of making mistakes or appearing less than perfect. Seneca emphasized the importance of courage in overcoming these fears. He said, it is not because things are difficult that we do not dare. It is because we do not dare that they are difficult. This insight reminds us that the challenges we face often seem daunting because we haven't yet mustered the courage to confront them. By being willing to look foolish, we open ourselves up to new experiences and learning opportunities that can lead to personal transformation. Consider the example of learning a new skill such as a foreign language or playing a musical instrument. In the beginning, it's natural to struggle and make mistakes. You might mispronounce words, hit wrong notes, or feel awkward and clumsy. However, these initial missteps are a crucial part of the learning process. Embracing the willingness to look foolish allows us to persevere through these early stages and ultimately achieve mastery. The Stoics believed that the journey of self-improvement is more valuable than the destination, and this journey often requires us to embrace our imperfections and vulnerabilities. This principle also applies to our professional lives. In the workplace, we might avoid volunteering for new projects or speaking up in meetings out of fear of making a mistake or being judged. However, the most successful and innovative individuals are often those who take risks and are willing to fail publicly. They understand that every mistake is an opportunity to learn and grow. By adopting this stoic mindset, we can approach our careers with greater boldness and creativity, leading to more significant accomplishments and personal satisfaction. Moreover, being willing to look foolish fosters resilience. When we embrace the possibility of failure, we become less afraid of it. 
This resilience is a cornerstone of Stoic philosophy. Epictetus taught, It's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. By focusing on our reactions rather than the fear of judgment, we build the mental toughness needed to navigate setbacks and continue pursuing our goals. This resilience enables us to recover quickly from failures and maintain our momentum. In social situations, the fear of looking foolish can prevent us from forming meaningful connections. We might avoid expressing our true feelings or sharing our thoughts because we're afraid of being misunderstood or ridiculed. However, authentic relationships are built on vulnerability and honesty. By being willing to look foolish, we show others that we're human, imperfect, and willing to take risks to connect with them. This openness can lead to deeper and more fulfilling relationships grounded in mutual understanding and trust. The Stoics also taught that our fear of looking foolish is often rooted in our concern for others' opinions. Marcus Aurelius wrote, The tranquility that comes when you stop caring what they say, or think, or do, only what you do. This teaching encourages us to focus on our own values and actions rather than seeking validation from others. When we let go of the need for external approval, we free ourselves to pursue what truly matters to us, even if it means occasionally looking foolish in the eyes of others. Embracing the willingness to look foolish can lead to greater creativity and innovation. Many of the world's greatest inventions and artistic achievements came from individuals who dared to think differently and challenge the status quo. These innovators were often met with skepticism and ridicule before their ideas were accepted. By being willing to look foolish, we allow ourselves to explore new ideas and approaches that others might overlook. This creativity can lead to breakthroughs and advancements that would be impossible if we always played it safe. In the realm of personal development, being willing to look foolish can accelerate our growth. Whether it's trying a new fitness routine, starting a new business, or learning a new craft, the initial stages are often fraught with uncertainty and awkwardness. The stoic practice of negative visualization, where we imagine the worst-case scenario, can help us prepare mentally for these challenges. By anticipating potential difficulties and accepting them, we can approach new endeavors with confidence and resilience, knowing that any embarrassment or failure is a temporary and valuable part of the process. Number 10. Seek Challenges Seneca encapsulated this idea when he said, Difficulties strengthen the mind as labor does the body. This wisdom highlights the transformative power of challenges, suggesting that just as physical exercise builds muscle, mental and emotional challenges build resilience and character. Embracing challenges starts with a shift in perspective. Instead of viewing obstacles as threats or inconveniences, the Stoics encourage us to see them as opportunities for growth. Marcus Aurelius often reminded himself that the impediment to action advances action. What stands in the way becomes the way. This powerful mindset shift teaches us to welcome challenges as stepping stones to progress. Each obstacle we encounter is an invitation to develop new skills, gain deeper insights and strengthen our resolve. Consider the benefits of seeking challenges in our personal lives. Whether it's learning a new skill embarking on a fitness journey or pursuing a challenging career goal. These endeavors push us beyond our comfort zones. The initial discomfort and uncertainty are natural, but they are also where the most significant growth occurs. When we challenge ourselves, we discover our true potential and capabilities. This process not only builds confidence, but also cultivates a sense of accomplishment and fulfillment. The Stoics believed that the pursuit of excellence requires us to continuously test and refine our abilities. Epictetus emphasized the importance of self-discipline and perseverance in the face of challenges. 
He taught, the greater the difficulty, the more glory in surmounting it. Skillful pilots gain their reputation from storms and tempests. By seeking out difficult tasks and embracing them with determination, we can develop the skills and resilience needed to navigate life's inevitable storms. In our professional lives, seeking challenges can lead to significant advancements and personal satisfaction. Taking on demanding projects, pursuing further education, or stepping into leadership roles are all ways to push our boundaries. While these challenges can be daunting, they also offer the chance to make meaningful contributions and achieve our career aspirations. The Stoics encourage us to approach these opportunities with a mindset of growth and learning, understanding that every challenge we face at work is an opportunity to improve our skills and expand our capabilities. Moreover, seeking challenges fosters a growth mindset a concept that is widely recognized in modern psychology but has its roots in stoic thought. A growth mindset is the belief that our abilities and intelligence can be developed through dedication and hard work. This contrasts with a fixed mindset which sees abilities as static and unchangeable. The Stoics believed in the power of continuous self-improvement and by adopting a growth mindset we can approach challenges as opportunities to learn and evolve, rather than as threats to our self-esteem. The practice of seeking challenges also enhances our resilience. Resilience, or the ability to bounce back from adversity, is a key component of Stoic philosophy. Seneca wrote, A gem cannot be polished without friction, nor a man perfected without trials. By willingly facing difficulties, we build the mental and emotional fortitude needed to withstand future hardships. This resilience enables us to remain steadfast and composed in the face of setbacks, maintaining our focus and determination. In addition to personal growth, seeking challenges can deepen our empathy and understanding of others. When we step into difficult situations, we gain first-hand experience of struggle and perseverance. This perspective can increase our compassion and empathy for others who are facing their own challenges. Marcus Aurelius reflected on the interconnectedness of humanity, noting that we are all part of a larger whole. By embracing challenges, we not only grow individually, but also contribute to the collective strength and resilience of our communities. It's important to note that seeking challenges doesn't mean recklessly taking on every difficult task that comes our way. The Stoics advocated for wisdom and discernment in choosing our battles. We should seek out challenges that align with our values and goals and that offer meaningful opportunities for growth. This intentional approach ensures that we are not overwhelmed by unnecessary difficulties but are instead focusing our efforts on pursuits that genuinely matter to us. In our relationships, seeking challenges can strengthen our connections and deepen our bonds. Whether it's resolving conflicts, supporting a loved one through a difficult time, or working on personal growth within the context of a relationship, these challenges require effort and commitment. By facing them head-on, we demonstrate our dedication and love for those we care about. This willingness to engage with difficult situations can lead to stronger, more resilient relationships built on mutual respect and understanding. Thank you for being a part. Your journey towards a resilient and purposeful life is just beginning. If you found value in today's insights, continue your exploration by watching the next suggested video on your screen. Together, let's strive to live our lives with intention and grace. Thank you and stay resilient.